Yeah, just real quick. These are some. Uh, I made these around the time when I started uh, when I made the the, the Bone Dagger Moon of Tomb song. I remember around that time, I was uh, starting to do this stuff. Uh, I don't even know why. It was just it was fascinating to me. Uh, and these are pretty solid. I mean, these are like a year and a half old. On the paper, once you fold it together, it uh, adds up. Okay, the base you take cardboard and you fold that around it. Um, when you make the sheet right, you make it a little smaller than what's in the book. You you lower the percentage on the copier. Obviously, I did it at Staples. Um, you glue the you fold them together. You glue them right, and you cut them apart. And you the, you painstakingly cut the things with uh, little scissors. Okay, and you score the bottom so that you have feet. And some of them I cut their feet off because uh, I guess I wasn't skilled at it. Okay. Uh, paper soldiers are a whole topic on its uh, on their own. Okay, I was you know paper girls have paper dolls. I think uh, uh, my girl, I think she, I think she had uh, old books on paper dolls too. Right? Uh, yeah, paper is amazing. Right? Uh, and there's some other books that I, I got just out of curiosity. In Italy, they do a lot of these paper war games as well. Here's the Thirty Years' War, right? uh, and you have the same idea. It's pretty much the same principle. Right? You have kind of like a mirror image of it, right? Uh, you uh, cut it out or you make a copy of it. You fold them together. You glue them together, right? And they're like perfectly matched as a mirror. So they're, they're thick enough to stand up. And you have the little platforms, right? You, know, you fold those out. You score them. Uh, and they come out and you're able to have like little paper armies. So uh, obviously, this is painstaking, uh, but you know... There's a bunch of these books. Right? This one is in Italian and English. Okay? Uh, Thirty Years War. I mean, they also, you can make buildings. They actually have a book where like you can make buildings. Now, one of the things that fascinated me about this, okay, oh, you're gonna play with your little toys, it's like whatever, you know, is that in terms of filmmaking, once again, I'm going back to the idea of FX, the idea of having not a lot of money and trying to create worlds. Uh, by not, and not being an animation master, uh, uh, making miniatures like the Toho films for papers, whether it's puppetry, right, or whether it's settings or, or miniatures, well, it's a way, basically, to uh, make films, uh, to to make worlds when you don't have a lot of money. Okay, so it's more than just you know uh, the war gaming or, or gaming interest of it too. Uh, you can sort of make. Uh, uh, you know, I may have to make, uh, you know, there's even, you know, toy theaters is another thing that used paper also that they used to have. I think J.K. Chesterton was a big um, a toy theater fan, right? Writing his own little plays. But the point I'm making is that the paper, this offers a way for a, a no-budget filmmaker to make something better than just some, you know, jerk running through the woods with a fake knife, right? And to be frank. Um, and there's a bunch of books in these series here. I just wanted to show them real quick. As you create space, or oh, no, uh, Kindle, I guess now. Nah. Yeah, look at the different bro uh, books they got. Uh, man, the uh, the Landsknecht. Yeah, imagine the Franco-Prussian War. Right, seven. Uh, it's damn seven years war. So ah, the Resurgimento. Uh, I'm fighting for the South, but uh, of course in the, the Second War, I'm, I then fight for the North. But anyway, and there's a an American paper soldier. You know, had this as well. You have. Uh, you have one on World War Two. You can actually make a, like an M4. It's American soldiers, but here you have Civil War soldiers. This is an old book. Um, my friend Nero remembers this as a kid, uh, and them having it in the, uh, also having it in the library. Right? And of course, now with color uh, copiers, uh, you can make that. I mean, back in the day when this came out, I think you literally cut them out. You know, you were gonna say goodbye to the book, but now you know, thanks to technology, you can keep this and just make more of them. And you see the same concept. You have a mirror image front and back, uh, you cut it out one piece and you fold them together uh, to make them solid using glue and you have the base here, so interesting. Um, uh, also, being an old book, oh my god, look at this. You, know, you have the, the blue coats, the, federal, the federals, damn Yankees. Uh, but I like too that this was not edited out, uh, you know, I mean, I'll just show you here. You got the, you got the bat Confederate battle flag, right? Uh, Hobby Lobby. I saw they have Civil War uh, plastic toy soldiers. They also have the uh, Confederate battle flag there as well. So because it's history, right? You know, 
And here, you can actually make, like, a, you can make more structures, right? You can make buildings, you can make weapons, you can make other things other than just figures. So once again, I have an eye for filmmaking in this. And oh, oh, God, stop. Oh. So just interesting, the paper soldiers. Uh, I'm going to send, I'm going to use this video to have a couple of links. Apparently, one of the, one of the men, one of the famous men who actually had a huge toy soldier collection, and he actually played war games, the Little Wars version with the cannon, was Peter Cushing. There's a famous, uh, I believe it's a BBC uh, newsreel on it, right? which is fascinating. You see Peter in his study uh, with the, uh, the the things on the ground. It's really interesting, very interesting. Uh, a lot of intersection with this stuff. That's why I keep going. It's not just like, a, these things connect, right? at least for myself. Also, there's an, uh, another channel, a guy down in uh, Florida. He, he shows how the other way you make soldiers, you can make them out of uh, the, the clips. Oh, man, I can't believe I'm drawing a blank. The, the, uh, the things you put the wash up on, right? I can't believe I'm forgetting. I'm drawing a blank. Uh, you can make soldiers out of that. And he also does the Little Wars rule, uh, rules. Actually, that's probably, if you're really interested in this, looking at that video series, it's probably a good idea because you sort of see him play, right? And, of course, he's got no one to play with, right? You know, <laughs> So he's playing with himself, you know, um, taking one side and the other, which a lot of war gamers do. There's a lot of solo war gaming going on. But in that video, okay, the difficulty of having an accurate cannon, I think they do make cannons like that, like the ones now that uh, H.G. Wells talked about. But obviously, we're talking about money here, right? And especially after, after today, uh, the, the money is, is going into the damn uh, the black hole, okay? No one could have seen it happening. But uh, the guy offers a good alternative if you want to use a, an, a fairly accurate uh, cannon, right? Well, I'll just show you right here. Go to Dollar Tree. It was a dollar anyway. Uh, I got these when it was, still was a really the Dollar Tree. Uh, and you get these spring guns. Okay, I got a couple of these. Okay. Uh, these are fairly accurate. I would argue maybe too accurate. Uh, you could do a lot of damage with these. They pretty much do the job of a cannon. So if you play the Little Wars sort of games or, or made other games where you shoot things, which I think is a lot more fun than rolling dice. No offense to my brother James. Uh... But yeah, get the, one of these spring guns, and these work pretty well. So, and that is a little look into uh, paper soldiers uh, and uh, the, the different thing, the historical aspect, the FX aspect, the fun aspect of it, because it's all about fun, right? Uh, we're gonna have so much fun this year, aren't we? <laughs> Later. Oh, got you, son.